morning, it's the night before. My name's Nick Majerison. Hello. Uh, with us we have Dr. Nick Begich. Now, uh, this guy is the owner of the website earthpulse.com. Uh, he's a researcher who's been looking into all sorts of things, but largely technology, uh, mind and brain enhancing technologies, mind control technologies. Uh, listen, let's get him on the show. Uh, we've got some incredible stuff to cover here. Uh, Dr. Nick Begich, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. It's good to be with you in the uh, UK today. One of the things that's been mentioned in the past to us is something called HARP, and it's spelled H-A-A-R-P. Lots of people have got lots of theories about what it is. What's your take on it? You know, I was very well acquainted with the inventor, Dr. Bernard Eastland, up until his uh, death late uh, in December last year. And he had invented a device that was essentially would focus radio frequency energy, concentrate it through an array or a field of antennas, by analogy, in a similar way to what a laser does with light, um, HARP does with radio frequency energy. Focuses it, and then by manipulating that energy in various ways, it can couple with the environment, with an area called the ionosphere, which exists about 30 uh, kilometers, begins about 30, 40 kilometers above the Earth's surface, extends out several uh, hundred kilometers uh, from there, and be able to manipulate that area as well as the magnetic field lines that surround the Earth for specific weapons applications. Think about it as a, um, like a primer on a bullet. You know, it's the uh, small amount of energy that's controlled in a very directed way that then couples with Earth's natural energy fields and is able to manipulate them for specific weapons uses. So it's a weapon? Yes, ultimately it leads to weapons development and there are some capabilities of the system as it sits right now uh, HARP has the ability to do a variety of things that show up in the open literature uh, f from the military, in in including things like o enhancing over-the-horizon uh, radar. Then you have the ability of literally um, creating either a patch shield or a global shield uh, with HARP instruments where you can then uh, disrupt electronics on sophisticated craft. So an incoming, say, uh, intercontinental ballistic missile could be literally uh, knocked out of the sky utilizing uh, this technology. And then, of course, there's the more exotic uh, applications that have shown up in the literature and something we researched pretty thoroughly. In fact, we used over 350 reference sources, primarily uh, government and academic records, and the things that show up are t two areas, the weather modification technologies, which seems to be the most controversial uh, to a certain extent, and then the ability of influencing uh, the emotional state of uh, human populations. And that, of course, is one area that gets quite controversial and has been subject of a lot of discussion over, over the years. Controlling uh, human beings. And what we were able to demonstrate... <laughs> Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Now, I'm an average person. I'm just going to go through some of the things you're telling me this thing can do. Firstly, it can knock missiles out of the sky. Secondly, it can change the weather. Controlling human beings. Absolutely. In fact, on an emotional level, there was a paper that was done by J.F. Gordon MacDonald. And what he suggested back in the 60s was if we could ever figure out how to electronically stroke the ionosphere in just the right way, we could control uh, the behavior of people over huge geographic areas. HARP, in fact, has the capability of, of doing this either as a side effect or a deliberate effect. But the section in the European Parliament's resolution, which follows the HARP sections, it says... Uh, it calls for an international convention introducing a global ban on all developments and deployments of weapons which might enable any form of manipulation of human beings, unquote. And the, and the reason that, that we got that in is we were able to demonstrate uh, in, in, the, in the hearing uh, an infrasound device, a device that transfers sound uh, directly uh, into the human body where you can perceive it, just like people hear our voices on the radio today, only is coming from a very, very different place. And what we had asserted in that hearing is that this range of weapons, which were far beyond just heart, but this range of weapons were being developed by the U.S., and soon it would be possible to do this remotely. And it was 2005 that Woody Norris... To do what? To make, to make people hear voices? Yeah, they can actually target an individual in a crowd, transfer a voice directly into their head that nobody around them will hear. And, and that kind oh, of Oh, man, this is messed up. So, so hang on a minute. So, let me get my head together on this, because this is quite a lot to take on board. What you're telling me 
is that there is technology that exists that can beam voices into people's head. That's correct. So this harp project that you're telling me about, and I mean, this is an unbelievable uh, thing that you're telling me about here. This is based in Alaska. You're in Alaska. I mean, that, that's where we're talking to you from at the moment. I, I mean, right. what, what, uh, you know, do, how often do you pop down there and stuff? You know, what's your involvement with it? Well, you know, we ob we observe it from a distance. I mean, we're sort sort of not very welcome there these days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what to make of that, uh, Nick uh, Begich. I want to thank you for joining us, man. So much information to take on board there. It's unbelievable. Uh, as I understand it, though, the best uh, website to go to is the one that you set up uh, about this and other subjects. Uh, Earthpulse dot com. Uh, that's the website that you're behind. We can only ever scratch the surface on interviews, uh, but you can carry on looking on the internet. Obviously, Earthpulse dot com. Uh, uh, thanks for being with us, man. Good to talk to you. Hey, thanks for having me. Look